The following video is one in a series on spiritual resilience training, a non-religious view of personal values and their dynamics with others. The contents reflect a variety of principles and practices of systems theory and relational counseling for team building and family resilience. Although the series is intended to support Army Corps values, each video also encourages the viewer to reflect on their current prominent values in specific situations and to consider what values may be more appropriate to means and results that are honorable and helpful with others. Chaplain Dillard initiates creating and posting these videos. Their contents and YouTube's linked videos do not necessarily reflect specific beliefs, practices, requirements, or endorsements of the Department of Defense, its subordinate organizations, or other groups with which Chaplain Dillard is affiliated. Welcome back. We are going to start an entirely new series today on something called the speaker listener technique. This is a technique to discern the problem that each person perceives when there is some conflict that you can't seem to make headway on. Uh, maybe it'll seem like a trivial thing, maybe it'll seem like a nuclear explosion, but for some reason you're not seeing it the same way. And here's the thing that we must understand. We cannot move effectively to a solution until we have well-defined the problem. Consider the following problem. Let's say that two people are bouncing checks and the law might get involved, a family, uh, marriage and family counselor might get involved, the, uh, an older parent of, of one of them might get involved, and they all might have different, what they believe to be, solutions for the problem. But the question is, what is the real problem? Why are they bouncing checks? It could be that this is their very first uh, checkbook that they have ever shared together, a checking account they've ever shared together, and they have one account, but they have two checkbooks. And I realize that not a lot of people use checks anymore, but the idea still stands. If they've got one account and they're using two checkbooks and they're not talking to each other, it's a communication issue. It's a teamwork issue. Now, it could also be that they're just not doing the work of the math to actually balance their checkbook and there needs to be some training and self-discipline or a way to enter uh, those checks and deposits to actually do the math and to be self-disciplined about it. Or it could be fraud. They could be intentionally bouncing the checks and uh, they might need some legal attention to stop that. Or it could be uh, something entirely different. But the, the very nature of the problem will determine the nature of the solution. But we really can't move the solution until we understand the problem. Now this applies to marriages, it applies to co-workers, it applies to friends or whatever. Uh, I'm going to show you what's called the speaker listener technique in a moment and the floor. Typically this is uh, a little square card and it's written on it and we call this the floor because one, it looks like a floor, the, the uh, tacky little yellow and white tiles you'll see in a moment, but also to hold it like a prop I've got the floor, or here, you have the floor, it, uh, you start, you, you speak first. It's a visible reminder that that person is the speaker, and whoever doesn't have the floor is the listener. Now, obviously, uh, this is not going to work with coworkers or teenage siblings or friends. You can't pull this thing out of your pocket and say, hey, let's do something. But the principles of it can be learned and modeled by an individual and in time with patience and being deliberate um, by you modeling these things with the other person, they can begin to pick up on it and communication can get better. Even if they don't change in how they're talking to you, the way that you talk to them and listen to them can change and it will radically re uh, reduce arguments and can greatly increase uh, your ability and speed to get at the nature of the problem so you can begin to work at uh, an appropriate solution. Okay, you ready? All right, here's the speaker listener technique as a whole. You see that there's rules for the speaker, there's rules for the listener, and there are rules for both. We're going to take this in a three-part series. Today we're just going to do the speaker and we'll do the listener uh, and both in subsequent videos. So let's take it one at a time. Speak for yourself and don't mind read. Well, why is that important? First, we need to realize that under stress, our first word is often you. 
Anytime we get in an argument, we tend to uh, blame the other person. Well, you didn't do this, and you didn't do that, and you puts the other person on the defensive. So immediately we have hindered good communication by speaking for ourselves. I believe, I want, I wish, I think, I value, uh, and just uh, what is inside of us, what we want or what we believe, uh, can greatly reduce the anger of the other person and their defensiveness because we're not talking about them. Second, the only perspective that we really know is our own. It just makes sense to talk to ourselves because when we say you, we're making some assumptions uh, that are often exaggerated, you always or you never, but they're often uninformed as well. We don't know their motives. We don't know what they do when, when we're not looking. We don't know uh, their goals necessarily until they tell us. So it just makes sense to speak for ourselves because we're the only ones that we really can take responsibility for. Thirdly, when we speak for ourselves, we avoid many arguments. I've begun to touch on this already, but think about how much could be uh, lessened in terms of the heat of the moment and the duration of the, the argument, which can become a conversation and not an argument, and uh, how many times that happens if we will just speak for ourselves instead of uh, attacking the other person. Fourthly, when we do speak for ourselves, we are modeling helpful talk for them. If we are consistent with, uh, I thought, uh, I wanted, uh, I wish, I believe, uh, and we're talking for ourselves, eventually they may pick up on it and say, well, I thought, well, I wanted, and then we begin to sense what the tug of war is. Even though we haven't come to a solution yet, we're beginning to understand the problem, and we're not attacking each other, we're not denigrating each other, we're discerning the differences between our goals and values that are underneath this tension. And lastly, on this point, Mind reading, because above it says don't mind read, uh, mind reading, which is uh, simply assuming, often starts with false information. We might uh, try to mind read and think that we know their motivation. We might think we know their end goal. We might think we know what they believe about us, but we don't know until they tell us, until we listen while they're telling us, and that's when they have the floor. Now, again, you might not physically share a piece of cardboard with the stuff printed on it, you might, but you might not. But we need to wait for them to tell us and not mind read it. It's just not helpful because it doesn't deal uh, with true facts, usually. The second point for the speaker is to keep statements brief, not to go on and on. Now, why is this important? First, under stress, their brain and spirit, just like ours, can't take in as much. When uh, There's a couple reasons for this. When we get stressed, uh, our heart rate, our heart rate increases. We go into fight or flight mode. There's a couple things that that does. All of the blood goes to our extremities, our arms and our legs, for for that fighting or that um, that running. Now we might not, hopefully, don't physically fight or run, but our heart rate still is going. Now, if your blood is going to your extremities, where is it leaving? It's leaving your head, right? And we are less able to think clearly when we are emotionally upset and our heart is racing. So if we can get our heart rate down by speaking for ourselves and, and speaking slowly and, and being brief and not mind reading, it helps us and them to be able to take the information in better. Now that's a physical reason that we can't take, then as, take in as much. A spiritual reason we can't take in as much is if you remember uh, in previous videos I've referred to values as uh, things that are golden to us solid gold or maybe unrefined gold, maybe gold-plated has a, a some worth, but not as much as we might be attributing to it. Or maybe it's fool's gold. It really doesn't have that much value or worth at all. But if we think it is valuable and, and we are protecting it and it feels like somebody else is attacking it, we are only going to get uh, more adamant to self-protect, not to open up and tell them uh, what we think or feel or believe and to, um, to be respectful and trusting toward them. So it's just helpful uh, to use the speaker technique uh, for that speaker listener technique for those reasons. We're not able to take in as much physically or spiritually when we're ramped up and excited and, and angry or scared. 
A second reason to keep statements brief is that presenting big concepts in smaller parts can slow everything down. If we are to the point where we're, we're really upset with our spouse, one of our kids, a coworker, an employee, uh, a, a friend, or a stranger, and if we give it to them like a fire hose, uh, you ever thought of the analogy or the, the um, uh, idiom, uh, don't drink from the fire hose? Uh, it's putting out more than you can take in. But if we can break it up into chunks, here's a, here's a glass of water, okay? Take your time, drink that, digest that. Here's a glass of water, take your time, drink that, digest that. Eventually, we will get uh, what is on our mind and heart uh, conveyed to the other person. It slows things down to a digestible pace uh, so that they're able to hear it and think about it and then give us feedback from their perspective. Otherwise, feeding them through fire hose uh, overwhelms them and nothing gets accomplished. As I just said, this lessens the likelihood of heated arguments and it increases opportunities to clarify understanding. Uh, in a moment, we'll go to uh, rules for the listener, but I, I'll go ahead and let you uh, see a little bit ahead. When we give them a piece, we want to give them an opportunity to paraphrase and tell them, tell us what they heard. And they might tell us something or give us feedback, a, a paraphrase, that's completely different than what we intended to communicate. But we don't know that's what they heard until we give them an opportunity to say it in a paraphrase. So by giving it in smaller chunks, uh, it's like going into the woods. You take a few steps and you stop and you check, am I going in the right direction? Rather than just taking off at a dead sprint and then checking in 30 minutes to see if you're in the right direction. It's better to stop and check. Okay, tell me what you, you think I just said. Tell me what you're hearing uh, to help clarify understanding. And that will uh, lessen the heat of the moment and arguments too. Brief statements also model how we want them to talk to us. Again, whether you, you use the card or not, and you probably won't unless you're in uh, formal marriage counseling or something like that or, or a class where this is given, even if you don't have the card and even if they don't do exactly what you're doing, speaking briefly and speaking for yourself, over time with patience and, and being deliberate, they will eventually begin to pick up on some of the ways that you are talking to them. Uh, and it's only natural to reflect that style back to you, um, especially if they see that it is helpful to lessening the heat of the argument, to lessening the frequency of arguments and the intensity of arguments. All right, that concludes our uh, rules for the speaker this time. Next time, we will look at rules for the listener and uh, go over some reasons why that is helpful and ways to do that as well. And I hope you'll join us then. At the release date of this video, I am stationed with Research Development and Engineering Command, RDECOM, at Aberdeen Proving Ground, Maryland. Because the majority of our personnel are in this area, I spend most of my time here. I do, however, travel to our distant units based on command priorities and budget. I place these videos on YouTube for broad visibility to Army personnel and their families, but I hope the videos will be helpful to others too. If you are assigned to RDECOM and want to request specific topics by video, training on site or by VTC, or confidential counseling on site or by secure webcam, you can contact me at jeffrey.d.dillard.mil at mail.mil.